working on Magnum and today we're going to be focusing in on the steering setup. So the front axle as you can see we've got the tires or the mower sitting on the tires now and we're going to get to that once Tony's back over and we can lift the mower back up. In the meantime though I've been working on the steering so I'm using Tony's original custom steering wheel with the shaft that was already there that's been lengthened and then with the help of the universal joints and a couple shafts I'll be able to get a steering column all the way from the top down under the mower to the rack and pinion setup that will be connected to the front axle itself. So there's a lot going to be going on, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first thing I need to be working on is how to figure out how to get one of these universal joints down here on the bottom side. Now, I can slide the steering column up through this hole and down through this hole and I can put it right in there so it goes right through all the holes and essentially I could just put the universal joint right on the bottom and try and go out, but I'm not going to like that angle. Alright, so we decided on the design of the whole steering system. Now I know I went over it a little bit here, but I'm going to go over it a little more. Alright, so we like to start at the top and work all the way down to the front axle because that's the easiest. The easiest way to start, I find, is to set your steering wheel height. Now, it's always, always nice to have your steering wheel sit at the height that you like. Now Tony decided he would like it around, I think it's about five and a half, five inches off of the deck here. So, hopped on the lathe and I made a nice bushing that slides perfectly over here and it locks up against here. Then I can slide that down into here, set our height, and I can weld a nice bead all the way around on the top and hit the bottom side as well. Then, from there we know exactly what angle our steering wheel is going to sit at where the steering column is going to sit at, and we've now strengthened the whole top side of it. This is the way we like doing things. It works really great for us. Musty hasn't bent anything yet, and the steering wheel sits up pretty damn high on Musty. But this is a great way. This is how we're going to start, and then we'll start working our way down. It's a great way of going about it. It's always nice to have your steering wheel at the right height, and then get your way down to the front axle. Let's okay. get this welded in. <laughs> All right, so we welded in a nice internally splined piece of tubing there that fits this size of uh, shaft well. So I can throw some grease in there, throw some oil in there. It's going to work great. It's not going to gum up. So now with that done, now we can work on actually getting a U-joint underneath here and then one under the actual frame of the mower. We're going to start on the top, like we said, work our way down and then we'll get underneath. But next thing to do is actually get, like I said, get that U-joint on there, get a nice little bushing on the in between the two U-joints. I'll explain this more, but there's gotta be a bushing between the two U-joints so that they can't move side to side like this on the mower or try and bind or anything like that. So we're gonna get that all going right now. All right, we're back at it. Now, I was actually back at it last night and uh, good old me, I actually cut the steering shaft too short because through all my measuring I did acquire for the steering wheel not being seated in properly here. So I cut it about an inch short. <laughs> We're just shy of that. Anyways, it worked out fine. I had to lay out a new collar here, cut the shaft even shorter, and then come through. But now it might be hard to see. Right there, I tapped the end of the shaft for an M6 bolt so that when the U-joint slides on there, we can lock it in with the pressure of the bolt squeezing over the shaft and the lock in M6. Now, to the other side, I've got the, another steering shaft in the lathe here. And I was just showing Tony my little knurler set up here, as you can see. And we just finished knurling up this little piece here because I wanted a nice squeeze fit. So this is the side that goes up onto the actual uh, setup that's in the mower. And you can see we got this drilled out, so the M6 bolt goes through, and then this squeezes it together to pinch on the shaft. And then I just laid down this shaft, and then go on there, and now she's a nice tight fit on there. Yeah. 
We're gonna keep cooking away at getting this uh, whole steering setup in here. It is a lot of work. If you guys are looking to do a similar setup, just know that it is a lot of fabrication and you can buy parts and make things work, but in the end, it's still your own design to make it go from the steering wheel down to whatever kind of steering gear mechanism, mechanical advantage box that you have. Ours happens to be a racking pinion. Anyways, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's hop back on the lathe, on the grinders and the welders and get it going. digging this one yeah it's kind of hard not to because it's finally the upgrades it's needed and a lot of uh, the info that you guys have needed now what have we been doing building some steering now as you guys can see the rack and pinion is installed now we made a nice strong mount on the front here it is bolted on with two bolts it's nice and strong and then as you guys just saw we had to make some steering shafts now we're using two U-joints as we explained before. And uh, we had to make a lot of different shapes. This one was a square, this one had to get laid down. This one's some kind of weird, that kind of shape. And these all got divot screws in them, but slide that in there, lock it in, throw your bolt in, lock it down. These ones all have set screws in them. So these also get pinched tight and a set screw. Both sides here, boom. And then you can see this one's also drilled for the top side there and this one's blind. So this is a lot of steering and it can move all over the place. You guys saw that we put that rubber mount inside of here. So this is a couple big washers that we had that I made into a mount. Uh, so we have a big thick hardened rubber piece with actually needle two needle bearings inside that wrap the shaft, this shaft just perfectly. Gonna get the bottom shaft installed with the uh, bottom u-joint. I already set up the top u-joint in the mower and it's a really simple setup. You slide in your u-joint through the bushing bearing that we got set up there. And it's a nice tight fit into everything. And then we're on our way. So then from there I can grab my other shaft here that we have with that weird shape that we were talking about. And I can slide that in there and then this We'll get welded on the front here. It's this bushing that you guys saw, if I slide this over here, line that up, and then I'll weld that right there. So then this will be one unit. And you guys can see, U-joint spin, perfect. So obviously so it's not connected fully to the steering wheel until we put the other top lock screw in. But holy, there's gonna be no binding. We can, uh, this isn't full articulation, we still gotta add a little bit of articulation into here by uh, grinding out the uh, front axle a little bit because uh, we got some protruding bolts on the back side. But yeah. you guys can still see that it does still have flex here, but uh, it does affect the steering. So the U-joint on the bottom half here, you guys can see, it does move. Has a little side to side. Side to side. So it is definitely important to have that U-joint set up in a good, or, uh, a good geometry, geometrical angle. <laughs> It's good to have it at the right opposing angle to the pinion, as anything other makes it a little line nicer. Or anything yeah. like that, you want it to be perfectly in line. So that's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna final weld this stuff up on the front, and then we'll actually be able to start steering it. Um, after that, we're gonna start working on our custom tie rods, which we actually need to order a few parts for that. So it's gonna be a few days on that. But we can get our spindles installed, get those all finalized, get the tires on, and then start seeing where the center line is so we can set up the tire rods. Now, the nice thing about the rack and pinion is it's fully adjustable. You can do your toe in, you your toe tune out. It. You can tune it how you want. It's going to be great. This is going to be an awesome setup. We ran it in scrappy mower and it worked great. So we're super excited about this one. We're gonna get this all uh, sorted out and then we'll show you guys some more uh, progress as we get it done. But yeah. So 
So along with the whole front axle and steering setup, we decided we were going to do the full wiring, rewiring of this thing just because we wired it, it was working great, but some of his lights stopped working and some of them are broken. So we're just going to replace those, add some more. And then Tony's been put in that custom switch panel in. So he'll actually be converting his key start to a push button and kill switch. So that would be nice, lights up. And then Tony bought the uh, nice Amazon and you guys can go onto my Amazon uh, profile, OK Off-Road Mowers, you can find this there. It's just a nice four button switch panel. It's got your volt gauge and then our USB just in case Tony wants to charge the pen or something like that, who knows. But uh, so, Con Tony. Coney. 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 Coney's gonna be uh, cutting this into the mower there, so he's gonna be all all new wiring. We're gonna redo all his grounds, everything. It's gonna be great. We're gonna be adding in a big master kill switch so that you can kill the mower. That's uh, there. that's it right there. That's nice to be. So this is uh, we'll throw in the positive, and uh, when you take the when you put the key in, it puts power through continuity through the switch. When you take it out, it cuts it off so that the mower is completely dead. Anyways. We're gonna be doing that next after we get all the finalized of the front end done, but it's coming along great. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I freaking know Tony is. Nick's gonna be having his mower in, do a couple new upgrades on that. Musty's gonna get begin some upgrades, lots of cool things going on. Let's get right into some more stuff, guys, because uh, no point in just watching me looking at you guys. <laughs> all right, we have been giving it hard. We haven't been filming everything, so we're gonna be going back over some stuff. Check this out. Tony? There's still lots of work to do, but some of the main ones on our list have been tackled. That's my steering. And uh, I guess I'm here to show you some one finger sitting on it. Fully weighted. This is a dry steer. And lock like, to lock. That's not normal. So that's, We're really happy. Like, Insane. And if you guys were wondering, Tony, do a lock to lock slow so that they can see how many revolutions it actually does. Here, yeah, we'll go right to full lock on the right, and we'll follow this one. So that's uh, that's one and a half. One and a half turns. So it matches identical to the steering rack that we installed. We really like this setup. We're gonna show you guys the last few things that we did to make this setup work so great, but the next thing we need to do is take it all apart. Let's get right into tearing this thing back apart, guys, because it's been a long haul to get here, but whew, we are excited. out this section and uh, of the steering system and this is obviously the rack the tie rods and tie rod ends now these are m12s uh m12 studs with m10 uh other studs i guess you call it whatever you want to say uh the u-joint here can get taken off both sides as you can see this one gets bolted on this is welded to the actual steering shaft but that basically just slides onto that shaft that goes up into here you throw some bolts in it Boom, boom, boom. Easy enough if you need to change your belt. Pull that off, take it off, do that. But we're taking this all out because we're gonna install a new belt and then clean up all this, paint some stuff, clean this up, sandblast it. But we thought we'd go over that, how easy that is to take out the steering. It's really easy, really simple. On the spindles themselves, they have the ends tapped for a bolt so that you can slide a bolt in there and the end cap so that your rim and tire can never come off. And then as you guys can see, this is way overdone, but you can, they actually threaded the end of the spindle. Basically a big nut goes on there to all lock it in. You can lock it all in like that, and then we'll put this bolt in the end, and the rim and tire will never come off because the C-clips or E-clips, they do break a lot. And sometimes you have to deal with that a lot. Nick had it happen to his mower, and it blew up. Both at the same time. Yeah, literally both E-clips. One blew off, the other one fucking fucked off. Another great tip is for your spindle, always add washers into both sides so that it has no, and you can see that's all the up and down plan I have, which is minimal, very minimal. And then once we actually fill this with grease, this thing won't be able to move whatsoever. So again, lots of tips and tricks to building your guys' mower. And I hope you guys use these stuff because honestly, we've been doing it for three years now and we've learned a lot in the process. So I like sharing with you guys so that maybe one day, one of you guys' cool ass mowers can come ripping with us and do the stuff that we do. 
We are giving her hard. Doing some painting, some grinding. We added in bump stops there so the axle can only flex so much now. Reinforce the frame. As you guys can see, we cut off the old steering with the plasma cutter, which worked out great. We plated that over, ran new welds over it with the Eastwood 180 MIG. And as you guys can see, the boys are hard at work. Nick's actually getting this John Deere all ready to go. Tony's been in the background on the other side of Nick with the Dupli colors here. Giving her hard on the red. It's like an anodized red, but holy, it looks good. And as you guys can see, Nick's front axle's pulled out because he uh, broke it a little bit, so we gotta fix that. But Tony's been doing lots of uh, painting against making things ready. Cool. Exactly, making it look cool, getting things ready so that we can actually get it all installed back in the mower and get to wiring, because that's our next big thing. But we've accomplished a lot of the big things on this build, and we only got small things left to do, like touch up work and finishing work. But we're getting it going. We got a few things I got to do to Musty, a few more things to do on the John Deere, and then we're firing that up. But let's get back to Tony's build because that's the most important right now. All right, let's do it. All right, while we are under here, we threw a brand new belt on and we realigned his belt keepers. We threw them behind the pulleys so that we're actually trying to get the belt to slip off the front of the of the uh, pulley here so that it disengages when you clutch it. We also threw another one in the back there. We got the idler pulley. We got everything set up here so that it should work great. Clutching, everything works great. Just reinforcing things, making things nice and straight, adding things where we need it, and of course, gusseting up front where it takes the most strain. As you guys can see, we got that nice big flange bearing right up front there. So that should hold the front axle real strong along with the front bushing here. So let's get this all reinstalled and show you guys what it looks like. So it's in there you can see it makes contact on the metal there so it acts as a bump stop and we are actually going to build some nice rubber pedestals here to hit the axle so there'll be rubber bump stops but as you guys can see Tony finished up painting the spindles here and man did they turn out good so what we did you guys saw in the early stages of the build process we put some tubing on the outside of the spindle here to gusset it we also added in an eighth inch piece of triangulated metal here and welded it all the way on the inside or on the outside and on the inside so that nothing, nothing will bend on this. It's just gonna look like this for the rest of our times. Now, you might be wondering what this little piece of square is here and you guys can see that on the back side of the axle, when this has the whole steering rack in it, this will hit flush. So that means the spindle cannot steer more than what it has set up now. This you can literally- just so we can see it hit flush. So now when our tire gets pushed up onto a rock and it's trying to, you're trying to drive the whole mower over your front axle, over the spindle, it's gonna rely now on this plus the internal uh, rack and pinions uh, stop there to stop your spindle from trying to oversteer or understeer it. So we did that, the spindle uh, braces and uh, the steering stops on both sides so that these spindles are completely ready to go now. This is a big thing to do if you guys don't want to be broken down on the side of the trail with a bent spindle because that happens a lot, especially awesome. once you put some bigger front tires on. So if you're upgrading your mower, upgrade your spindles, upgrade your steering, upgrade your engine, upgrade your transaxle, upgrade your pulleys, upgrade your clutch. Everything you can make stronger. <laughs> <Just start upgrading laughs> things. <laughs> okay, let's get some more things in. The rack and pinion is next and that's all freshly painted so I am excited. Good to see this done. Hype. Right, so it's all coming together. Rack is in, tie rods are all painted. We got this extra piece of metal covering all that old stuff from the first couple front axles. But as you guys can see, it turned out great. So the next things we're going to be doing is, or the next thing we did actually was so we laid up a few of these spacers. They're about a half inch wide, threw them on the lathe, both perfectly good ends. And the rim will now stick off that much further and give us a little bit more poke on either side. Everything's bolted in, lock washers, 
locking nylon bolts for where we need it. We're gonna throw some cotter pins in the tie rod ends, and then this is all gonna be assembly ready to go. This is the, uh, the off-road Magnum steering upgrade, and man, did it work out good. Yeah. Holy. Holy, that steer is nice and smooth as you can tell. Wow. And look, still hits the steering stop perfectly. people that's a build right there so that's going over everything that we would personally do to our mowers one of our personal mowers that you guys see in the fleet all the time getting worn out and broken and used and abused you guys saw how it was built it worked out great our first test drive was just up and down the block like you guys seen and that works freaking awesome that's a great build all the tips and tricks that you guys saw and uh, I told and these guys said along the way definitely use and abuse them do it and then you guys will have an awesome mower. Hope you guys enjoyed this build. Lots of things went on in this one. Have a good one. See you in the next one. Peace.